Welcome to Nerd Talk, the podcast that talks about comics and everything in between. Now, here are your hosts, Dylan and Ian. What up, nerds? So, today I, I decided that's how I'm going to intro the podcast now. I'm After sorry, the I'm, initial intro. Just, just to let everyone know, I know it's a sad piece of news, DC has not contacted me yet to write Superman, hold up, hold up, or any of my other storylines. I know you have all been eagerly waiting the news, but I tell you, when they do contact me, you guys will be the first to know, but as of today, I am still waiting on the phone call. Also, Ian's sick, so he might hear some coughing and sniffling, that's why his voice sounds I'm a little gonna different. I'm going to through it for you guys. <laughs> Uh, so first thing came out today. Yeah, we're recording this on Monday again because uh, hoping Ian be better today because Friday and Saturday is really bad. But anyways, we got new look at Joker and he looks like a uh, hobo slash pimp. I told you he was gonna start looking like a pimp in the first one. Because <gasps> like we saw those you know those pictures of him on set and it was like oh he looks kind of like a pimp. Hopefully that's not like how he actually looks. And they gave him a cane and a long purple raincoat and he just. Total he pimp. looks like a pimp. And he's barefoot, too. I didn't notice Like, that. in the face, I think he looks great. Because Jared Leto, to me, has a great look for the Joker himself. Like, Jared Leto himself. But the design... I, I could s- tell he was going to be a pimp when you saw those set photos of him with the Lambo. That's, that's how, why I said. Yeah, that's how I knew that's he was That's why I was gonna, hoping he wasn't. But he, he was going to be a pimp when he, he had the Lambo. Like it was like, pimp. oh, he's just gonna, they're just going to make him look like a pimp. That's what I was saying, because we were saying that he looked like a pimp before, but I was hoping maybe, you know, that's just set photos. Maybe he'll look... Nope. Looks They're like trying to go so far opposite of, like, the classic Joker. I don't think they want anyone to even equate this with Heath Ledger's. Heath Ledger wasn't even close to classic Joker, though. But he wore the suit and everything. I don't think they want anyone to equate this with that. So that's why I think they're trying to go this complete new direction, because they don't want anyone to to be like, yeah, oh, I guess. Heath Ledger did it better. They're like, oh, well, they're two completely different takes. I'm just I'm, the thing that uh, is like I don't like the way he looks at it, but I have a feeling Jared Leto's performance will make me not care about how he looks. I agree with that. That's what I'm gonna think because right now I'm just not a big fan of the way he looks. But uh, yeah, we got multiple looks of him. He looks kind of creepy when he's sitting there talking to Harley and stuff. But uh, yeah, so next up, we got the Jessica Jones trailer, which actually got me hyped for the series. I probably ain't gonna watch it, but it looks. I'm still gonna watch good. it. It's on Netflix. We're watching Supergirl, so we're definitely going to watch I'm Jessica Jones. I'm watching Supergirl Jones. for the right reasons. <laughs> There's only one reason to watch Supergirl. There's only one reason to watch Supergirl. That's Melissa Benoist. I think that's how to say her name. Something like that. I don't anyway, know how to say hot, her name. But we're watching her. <laughs> I mean, we're watching Supergirl. I'm watching it for that amazing wire work. What are you talking <laughs> about? The stunt team does a fantastic job. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely watching Jessica Jones. This series looks great. Like, prior... Because... Which is weird, because Daredevil was great, it, like, the show was fantastic, but the trailers always sucked. This trailer was fantastic, I loved it. It was like, uh, I'm excited for Luke Cage, well, that's just reminding you of Halo even more. Because the guy who plays dun, Luke dun, Cage is the same guy who plays Locke in dun, Halo. Dun, dun, dun. And Ian's been complaining about how he needs to go and watch all the cutscenes. I do, I don't have an Xbox One, so I can't play Halo 5. Just go buy an Xbox One. I don't have the money to buy an Xbox One. I should go get the money. I wish I could. Go, go write those Superman comics and DC will pay you. Yeah. Get an Xbox One. No, what DC would do, they would take my ideas and then they would write them and be like, oh, well, he's our characters. He is our, I'm sure they could do that. Um, or just say Frank Miller wrote it. Everyone would believe it. Everyone would be like, yeah, I can see Frank Miller writing it. Don't you dare quit my work, Frank Miller. My work would be so much better. But what did you think of the Jessica Jones trailer? I thought it was really good. I'm not interested in Jessica Jones at all, but... <laughs> um, <coughs> Excuse me. I thought that was a really good trailer. And it really actually got you like interested for the series like before anything else. Because before I was just like, okay, it's Jessica Jones. I really care. Yeah, that's how, that's how I was prior to this trailer. I was like, you know what? Like, I have a feeling it's going to be good because Daredevil was so great. But I just don't care about Jessica Jones. And after this trailer, I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm definitely going to be watching this show now. Because prior to that, I was like, maybe I'll watch the first episode. <coughs> <sighs> but, uh... Yeah, Jessica Jones' trailer is really good, and I'm excited for the series now. now. The really big news we got last week, on last Monday, was the Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer, which we've all watched a million times. There have been a million different edits as well. Jar Jar Binks was the best one. Who are you? Me, so Jar Jar Binks. Somebody's looking at the like the all messed up, like messed out Vader helmet, and then you just see <laughs> Jar Jar's eyes yeah. and tongue comes out. That creeped me out when I watched it the first time. <laughs> That was hilarious. Uh, the Star Wars Wagon trailer, everyone, like, freaked out. That was an amazing trailer. It's a trailer. Especially after the whole, once he jumps to hyperspace, 
is when the trailer, or when the Falcon jump, the Falcon jumps to hyperspace. Falcon. Is when it gets amazing, because then it goes, then the theme starts playing with it. Dun, 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 dun. The guy, it wasn't John Williams, it was some other guy who composed the music for the trailer. Really? Yeah, I saw it on, I like Googled it, like, I don't remember his name, but he like basically, you know, took a bunch of the different music and like, made different adjustments to it and stuff, and it was great. Well, yeah, well, that was the theme he was... He yeah, was I know. It was good, because like, he, he really the, emphasized, yeah. like, the d- heavy drum beat. I know, it was great. Like, tra- I love the trailer, it's spectacular, and they're doing a really good job of not letting you know anything about the story, but showing you a good amount, which is what I'm hoping Batman v Superman can do with its trailers. Well, I think it's kind of over what... I think Batman v Superman storyline's not... You see, they're, they're, they, 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 the Zack Snyder said they're working on, th- on another trailer right now. Oh. I cool. guarantee you they're putting that in front of Star Wars. Hopefully. Because well, who else would you put in front of? You don't want to put in front of Bond because people will forget about it by the time Star Wars comes out. So, I mean, Star Wars is like, because Deadpool comes out before, before Batman. Comes out February, right? Yeah. It was a weird time to come out. but So, um, yeah, because that's like right at the end of Oscar season. I know. Um, but, uh, I don't remember the last time a good movie came out in February. You want to... Um, Kingsman came out last year. It was decent. I haven't seen it. Well, this year. It came out this year. Um... But, no, because, I mean, you don't want to put it before Star Wars because everyone's going to forget about it the time Star Wars hits. So you want to put it at, with Star that, That's what I would do. Because yeah. that's the biggest audience you're going to have to see a trailer. Everyone, you know how much money everyone's going to be trying to put their trailer in front of? You're going to have people trying to put Star Wars. You're going to get this first. X-Men Apocalypse. You're going to have Civil War. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I think we're going to get our first Civil War trailer for You're going to have Wars every single big budget movie trying to get their trailer in front of. Although, I don't think it's really going to matter because I think everyone's going to forget about it by the time. I mean, that trailer has to be absolutely stunning. For people to um, remember it by the end of Star Wars. Even if Star Wars is a terrible movie. If you movie, just have one scene of Superman and Batman punching We're probably not going to get any trailers. Because we and Dylan are going with a yeah. buddy. We're going to the Star Wars marathon. It starts at 1 in the morning on the 17th. Yeah, so we're going to be... We're well, probably going to get we're no trailers. We're sleeping through episode 1 and 2. Yes. We're probably and then not, episode 3 maybe. through 6. We'll probably watch. leave towards well, the I end. I am. I don't know about you. Well, I want to watch it, but then we have the hour and a half break. We have to go eat something. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if we're going to get any trailers before episode 7. They probably have to put trailers in before it. I, like for the marathon, I don't know. That's no, not for the weird. marathon, but for the episode seven itself. Oh yeah, then definitely, of course. It's not just gonna be like, well, because Star Wars not gonna play any trailers. Of course, no, because it's a marathon. But you know, whatever. That's why I just, I just talked. To, to, but, eh. um, so I, even if Star Wars, like even if Star Wars, like on episode one or two, part a little bad. I don't think anyone will remember the trailers. I think everyone will remember how bad Star Wars was, and all the trailers you just kind of forget about because you've been so hyped to see this movie. I can't wait for episode seven. Do you have any theories from the trailer? So I've already told you some of my theories, but I'll say them. Han and Chewie die. Yeah. I, I told Dylan, as soon as I saw the trailer, I told Dylan, I was like, Dylan, look. And Dylan made a video about how I thought, or he made a video about his theories, and he had one of them about how I he didn't make a video theory, I made my breakdown. Oh, yeah, he thought how Chewie dies. I, I agree with that. I told Dylan, I thought saw that. I was like, I thought he died. I showed him. A lot him. of people were saying Han, and then like someone on Twitter, I don't remember who it was, I was like, 52 is new or slazzy, I don't remember. But uh, they were saying, you know, watch the video at like .25 speed. And so I did, and I was like, that still looks like Chewie to it me. It looks like Chewie to me. You're saying it looked like It looked Han. like Chewie's belt, too. Like his, his... That's what I was saying. But I'm, either way, Han Chewie are getting killed, in my opinion. That's not a, that's not a spoiler, I'm telling you. It's we just my... It's, I mean, it's my opinion. It's all theories. I, I, I mean, I think they're getting killed. Because, like, I've, we obviously... Were, it's pretty sure Han's going to die, and you're not going to have Chewie without Han, so it's, they're probably going to both die. Yeah, um... Now, what I think is... I think Luke saves John Boyega in the, uh... Yeah, in the, the Force. That's what I was saying. Uh, I did read something interesting. I was, I was reading, like, the top eight things you need to know. And it did show, because it shows in the trailer when Boyega... <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to refer to everyone by their names in the film. It shows Finn, Solo, and, ba- and Chewbacca captured. You don't see Rey there. And, and the, by the toys, we know that Rey and... Kylo Ren have a conversation. So did she get away and he goes after her, or is he? Or did she bring him? Or did he bring her before him? Mm, very interesting. Because of the, the, the toys, Kylo Ren's toy is talking to her, trying to convert her to, to come like join them. What's the name of Oscar Isaac's character? Some Poe really- Damperon. I always think Poe Tamperon. He. I, if, <laughs> if anyone gets killed, that's not of the old cast. It's him. He gets captured. We yeah, already, but I believe that but every, like, all the reports and all the spoiler reports, spoiler, are saying that's at the very beginning of the movie. That's what turns John Boyega. 
Oh, it's him getting captured. Yeah, okay. like he gets captured, like you said, his whole plant gets destroyed. Yeah, that's what and I that's think is going to happen. I think they're pulling the Leia. He gets because ca- he is the son of. I'm reading Shattered Empire right now. I've read all except for the last issue because I don't think it's out yet. But uh, Shattered Empire is a story of what happens right after Return of the Jedi. So it's like you know what's the stormtroopers doing after they lose and everything. And it's about John, Bo- not John Boyega, uh, Poe Ta- Damperon's parents. It's, and it's, it's been really good so far, but, uh, so, obviously, they have a big impact on what's happening there, so he might be like, oh, they're the kids of this, of these people, I mean, he's the kid of these people, so, <coughs> capture him, destroy his planet. I think he's gonna pull a Leia said he that. grew up idolizing Princess Leia and Han Solo, and he would do anything for him, so, everyone then says he's on, like, a, he's on a mission, and then he gets caught, and... Well, obviously, we already saw in the Comic-Con footage, he's in handcuffs, and he gets caught, remember? Yeah. And the behind the scenes thing, and then we see. And like, apparently, that's John Boyega escorting him to his cell. That's what the oh, rumor is. That, that that's John Boyega. They thing. could be going super and like uh, one of my theories before I was saying. But uh, he, that that's when Boy, John Boy, or that's when Finn is bad, and then that, and then when all that stuff happens, Finn turns. So I said, like, what I've uh, been thinking is, which is kind of one of my fears, is that J.J. Abrams is trying to remake A New Hope. That's why we got another Death Star. That's why we got them sort of ish pulling the Leia with. Poe T- Damperon, and then say John Boyega, you know, helps save him. It's another sort of, you know, escape from here with people dressed as stormtroopers. It seems like he's trying to remake A New Hope a bit, which eh, I, I want something new. I want something in the spirit of the old ones, but I don't want something like this seems a little too much, but whatever. What if, like, if it is a remake of A New Hope and I watch it, I probably won't care. But right now, it's just like, I would prefer something that's not. My theory is, I think Kylo Ren is Luke's son. And I think he's trying to follow in his granddaddy's footsteps. That's why I think it's going See, on the there. The theory is that Luke is Kylo Ren. Are you serious? We've already seen him without his mask on. We know it's Adam Driver under there. No, uh... Remember? We've never seen him take his mask off and it be Kylo Ren is what everyone's saying. In the trailer, he even has it off and you see that beautiful Adam Driver hair. His I'm haircut looks so weird. I know, his haircut looks weird. <laughs> He's a good actor, apparently. Oh, he, like, yeah, that's from what I've heard. But, uh, yeah, uh, he, that, we already know it's coming. Then we got those official magazine images of him with the stormtroopers and his mask off. Remember? I'm just telling you, maybe that's like Luke's stunt double. From what I've seen, a lot of people are saying that he's going to be turned to the dark side because that whole talk he had with J.J. Abrams. And, like, all those people when he pitched Luke going to the dark side. I really hope that doesn't happen. I don't think they're going to think that'd be, I don't think they are either, but if they make Luke go to the dark side, that'd be the stupidest thing they could possibly do. The whole point of at the end of Return of the Jedi was that he would never be like him. We yeah. don't need another Skywalker turning. We saw that Luke is a good guy. Luke had a great character arc. The best in movie history, in my opinion. Like, the character development that happened across those three films is fantastic. And how they did it, like, how George Lucas was able to pull that off is, like, great. But, uh... Having another arc where he's like, oh, what he's turned to the dark side, that'd be so stupid, and undo that great character arc we already had. But I definitely don't think it's, uh, he's turning bad at I all. I think that'd be stupid, but I think Kylo Ren is his son. I think Kylo, I think they're both Han Leia's kids, Kylo Ren and Rey. Okay. I don't know how, but... <laughs> Kylo Ren and Rey... One of them is the kid, because Catelyn, K- Caitlin Kennedy, or whatever her her name is, the head of, Din- <laughs> head of Disney... <coughs> she's not head of Disney. She's head of like the Lucas department at Disney. Said right? that um, the like, the Star Wars main films focus on the Skywalkers. So one of them is a Sky or remember who the Skywalkers well, are. Well, Leia's still a Skywalker. Leia's still a Skywalker. Well, Skywalker. Just... So it's they're good. not married. Who? Oh, uh, on Leia. Yeah, but they're still a Skywalker. Even if his last name Solo is still a Skywalker. Whatever. I'm I'm still saying I think Kylo Ren is Luke's uh, grandson. I mean, not grandson's son, and Darth Vader's grandson. I think he wants to follow in his footsteps. And he's like, oh, what Luke did was wrong. I should be doing what my <coughs> grandfather did. That's what I think is going on with that. Uh, anything else you want to say about Star Wars trailer before we move on to our main subject? Um, If Captain Phasm is the one that kills Phasma, Phasma, Phasma kills Han and Chewie, I'm going to be mad. Why? You don't want a giant fat woman killing him? Nope, I do not. <laughs> Although one the one thing that does make sense for Luke being bad from the trailer and hear me out on this I just thought uh, of you did in your breakdown remember the stormtroopers behind them when they're taking their hands down yeah what if Luke comes out at that point and they're like oh that could that would be an interesting theory like what the you know like what the I, heck I'm not Luke? saying he's not bad I'm saying it'd be retarded if he was oh I don't I don't believe he's bad I think it'd be one of the stupidest decisions to make him bad it would be and I think J.J. Abrams whatever you want to say about him I think he's smart enough to say. 
We ain't doing that. I don't know I think about he, that. I think he's letting people play it up, but I do not think he's I don't, bad. I don't know about that. He remade Wrath of Khan when a lot when he lied specifically to the fans saying, "I'm not remaking Wrath of Khan." Man. He's, not, he's not. He remade Wrath of Khan. <laughs> he's not. Trust me. He's not. He's not. Luke will not be bad. Luke wouldn't have a beard if he was bad. <laughs> what? He wouldn't. He wouldn't have a beard. <laughs> Count Dooku had a beard. <sighs> He was a he was he's a good Obi-Wan. guy that turned to a Sith. He's the Obi Wan of this of this trilogy. I'm, I don't think he's gonna be bad either. But there's a small part. You think of he'll it. talk to the Ray? Be like, that's not your father. Your father was murdered. Han <laughs> <laughs> no, Solo is not your father. Go be a complete jerk. Or what, From whatever you do, don't kiss Kylo Ren. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do. Or Finn. What? Just <laughs> trust me. Oh God. <laughs> How did it? Did Luke get around? Uh-uh. You're trying what? to say Luke got around a lot. Uh, um, so that's it. Star Wars trailer was freaking amazing. You guys have probably all watched it a million times, like we have. Uh, it made I me... watch it every night before I go to bed. He literally does. Uh, <coughs> it, it made me stop crying for a few seconds during the Giants game. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we had every a silent like everything got it was just. Dun, dun. Well, there's only nothing three of us in the for. living room watching it. <laughs> My friend tweeted and texted me, instant boner. Oh, so, yeah. As soon as he watched it. We were in a group chat. And he just, as soon as the Star Wars thing went on, he was like, instant, instant boner. boner. Uh, so, yeah, now our main thing. What are you scratching yourself with a bottle cap for? Hold up. Hold up. Before we get to that, what did you think of Arrow and Flash this week? Uh, Arrow was subpar crap again, and Flash was really good. They found a way to go through the portals. Remember, and at the end, uh, Jake Garrick's like, hey. Oh, yeah, actually, I did enjoy Flash this week. Yeah, you're right. I did enjoy Flash. <laughs> Remember, Jake Garrick's like, I'm going to go. And Caitlin's like, but I don't want to bang you. And he's yeah. like, okay, I'll stay here. Yeah. That was that. Flash is good. I don't, Arrow, was, Arrow was terrible. It was better than normal. It was bad. It was still bad, but it was Now, hold up. I got something to say here. <laughs> so, someone's getting ready to get called out on this, on this podcast. Oh, Danny from Twitter, <laughs> okay, at superhero expert Danny. Oh, he changed his damn picture. Okay, you lucky sob. All right, he is in love with Laurel for some unknown reason. Why? What is your problem, Danny? Why do you like Laurel? He changed his profile picture. He like deleted all the Laurel pictures. I can't find them right now. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to read you some of this guy's tweets about how great Laurel is. Laurel is terrible! Count how many times she crossed... Everyone has their own opinion. I don't no. like Laurel either, but everyone has no. their own opinion. No, Laurel is terrible. She is absolutely the worst. Would you say she's worse than Felicity? Yes, right now, yeah, she has got so annoying. Especially yeah. just her her, her stance her and her manners and her tough face. And then, I'm going to bring back my fifth turn no matter what the cost. I don't give a crap about anybody else. I don't remember else. the list, but okay. <laughs> I think I'd like her more if she had a list like that. <laughs> I need to bring back Sarah. God, that was so annoying. Keep talking. I gotta find one, one yeah, of these. I don't like Laurel. She annoys me, but everyone has right to their own He opinion. hates Felicity for some good reason, but he <laughs> loves Laurel. I hate both of them. You know, we haven't bashed on Marvel. But- All right, hold up. Here we go. Here's a tweet from him. I love seeing Laurel all emotional in scenes. It develops her character and proves even heroes can have bad times in their lives. What the hell, man? She's terrible. She's absolutely atrocious. All she does is cry in every scene. Her eyes are literally tearing up in every scene she is in. Pretty much, yeah. Her and Felicity... And now Thea too. Like all the female characters are tearing, and the male characters are doing it this season too. Except like Oliver doesn't, but Diggle does. You know, all Diggle gets like that now too. Like you'll see tears and Diggle. And then, and like, like why? she's a terrible character. The only reason she she took uh, um, uh, what's her name? Sarah. I mean Thea, Thea over there was because she knew that would get Malcolm to let her use a pit. Oh, I want to talk about that. Oh yeah, ultimate also, use. I guess a little late, but spoiler alert for Arrow and Flash. You guys oh. probably don't care, but anyways, um. That part where Thea wakes up immediately murders two guys and then blames her father. It's like, you murdered them. You didn't have to. She literally takes that blade and slowly cuts through the guy's throat. It's like, you didn't have to do that. Your father didn't make you do that. He had two guys sent there so you could kill them, but that was your choice. Hey, it's, it's blame everybody else. That was so stupid. She's like, I don't like you anymore, father. Why do you do this? <laughs> That was so stupid. Okay, are you done calling him out? Hold up. Oh, gosh. 
Ian, people have different opinions. I, I can't let this go on. <laughs> what are you doing? I gotta find one of these other ones. He's talking about how he, th he thinks Arrow is a good... Arrow is really good this season. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. You really go... Why did you just thought... You realize we have like... Maybe around 10 or a little less hardcore. Oh, I just realized you said, Ian, just stop with the fan fiction. Well, screw you, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's a little, holy cow. What? We have, like, maybe 10 hardcore fans of Nerd Talk. And they call me a, he called me that. a racist and confirmed it. For what? <laughs> Ian Mason is a racist. Confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we move on to the next subject? <laughs> I love Laurel, Lance, and Katie Cassie, but the scene in 401 with that kid was just stupid. Uh, yes, it was, and every other scene with Laurel is stupid, too. <laughs> okay, he finally got off his phone like that. Yeah, what made you decide to just suddenly come? Because I, all I, I follow the kid, I follow the kid, and every time I like, I see he's got a profile picture of Laurel, and it drives me insane. How can anyone like Laurel? I, he's literally the only person I've ever seen that likes Laurel. <laughs> Name me another person that likes Laurel. There are tons of Twitter pages on Twitter. Well, Twitter accounts <coughs> that are like, Laurel forever, Lance is best. See, before Laurel this, forever. I thought it was just the writers. Now it's also Katie Cassie because it's the way she acts. It's the way she's always got to always stand there and act like she's always in control. And act like she's always mad and act like she's so tough. And it's like... If you have to act, you're not tough. <laughs> it's, yeah, if you have to act tough, you're not tough. And it was like, I'm sick of you. Like, you're like a twig. Someone could just snap you in half. And her fight scenes are so slow, too. Like, don't know. Whenever she fights... Like, that's not... Because I don't even know... I think it's like... I don't even know how many of her fight scenes she actually does herself. But the thing with her fight scenes, and it's happening with other people, but it's not as noticeable, is the fact that she'll, like, touch someone, and they'll... <coughs> like, the stuntman will do all these different things to Flips. make himself send flying. Like, he'll do a flip, or he'll fly himself. It's like Power Rangers, when they'd fight putties, and they'd tap a putty, and the stuntman would, like, do a backflip. Yeah. It looks so stupid. Also, I don't get why she has her police baton still. That's stupid. It really is stupid. And the fact that no one knows that it's um, Laurel. Laurel Lance. And that she's, she's never tired. She's an assistant d district attorney. You know how busy their lives are? Not her, apparently. Because there's totally no crime in, in uh, Star City. Alright. Next subject. Ian read a comic book that wasn't Green Lantern because I forced him to. <laughs> it, 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 stop laughing. Stop clapping! Okay, so it's uh, Adventures of Superman issues. I don't remember. I think it's forty and forty one or something like that. Can't go back to talking about Danny. No. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyways, these issues are some like Adventures of Superman is this new fifty two. <coughs> it was a series for new fifty two, but it's, a, it's the new fifty two series that takes place outside continuity. So they get like different writers and different artists for like every so and so issues to write like interesting stories. And this is one of my favorite. It's like fantastic. And uh, so I had Ian read it because it's only two issues and it's short. What did you think of it? Also, it's a buck a piece for each issue. If it you guys was are good. That, that's all you got to say the about it. The art wasn't very good. Oh my god. The art wasn't very good. And I thought... um. Here's my thing with the art. Because it's done by Jock, who is a fantastic Batman artist. He's great. But for Superman, I would not want him on each week, but he fit fine with this. Like, I was, I was okay with him on this. I don't know. I don't like the art. Um, but he's great. For, he he uh, did the art for my favorite Batman book, Batman Black Mirror. He he's great for Batman's uh, style art. But for Superman, yeah, I would I prefer someone else. It was interesting. It showed you a lot more. But like, it was just basically just like trying to show off the characters of Batman or Joker and Superman. Like they were just trying to show it, which of them stood for. The uh, comic is based around. Since I'm assuming you guys haven't read it, but uh, the comic is based around Superman Joker's first meeting. And so Joker sets up all these bombs, and he's on top of like, my the one, my planet. One, and my him one, and Superman have an encounter. My one problem with the thing is Superman is like, like, like he's like, I don't have a code. I just do what feel what is right or I feels right. Um, so wouldn't he kill him because he knows he could go kill more people? So Superman would stop that. That's how I feel about it. like Superman. Because no, Superman, because uh, the thing is, Superman knows. Superman he's, stopped before he killed anyone. No one died in Metropolis. Yeah, but just because no one died in Metropolis doesn't mean Superman's gonna lot, not let it happen anywhere else. Well, no, cause Superman's not executioner, and like the thing is, like Gotham gets jurisdiction on that guy or whatever. So there's no such thing as jurisdiction anymore in comic books. Hey, he came over there. Superman stopped him. That's one part I love about the Dark Knight. 
when it's like he's out of our jurisdiction and Batman goes and brings him back. When? In the Dark Knight, when the Chinese guy flees back to his country. Oh, yeah. And he goes back and he leaves him on the door. I like that part, because it's like, oh, what was that? But no, I just... I wish Superman would die. It was a good book, because it really showed you the two characters, and how, uh, how Joker just does stuff to get a reaction. It's all a game to him, and Superman is just kind of like, well... You can't do that with me because I don't I don't have a code. I just do what what I think is right. Seriously, the the dialogue was fantastic. Like, the dialogue was good. I love the dialogue and I love the part to where uh <coughs> so Superman's like, I don't have a code like Batman. I just generally don't kill people and Joker's like, What? <laughs> and Batman says like I mean Superman says like he said, you know, I generalize, I'm not uh you know, I am I'm, I'm vague. Yeah. But there's a there's a lot of cool dialogue in it. And uh basically what happens is he, he comes there, he plants a bunch of bombs. Superman is talking to him, but is able to uh, talk to him to where he finally figures out where the bomb is because he uses bombs. his vision. Bombs. And he gets all the uh, bombs. And then he takes Joker and like takes him back to you know police and everything. And then he ha- talks to Batman. What did you think of his confrontation with Batman? I love that part, too. It was good, but I still see Superman as saying if he if he hurts anyone, I'm gonna come I'm gonna come stop him. That's, that's what I, that's what he just said. He didn't hurt anyone. In no, Metropolis, I'm talking though. about in Gotham. He was that's, still the. That's what he said though. Remember? No, he said if he goes back to Metropolis, he's gonna kill him. Yeah, but he, but he but I feel like Superman wouldn't let him hurt anybody. That's how I feel Superman's character is. No, because it's like he, no, it's because it's Batman's problem. For uh, Gotham, because Batman is such a whiny little <laughs> person, to where he's like you know, Gotham might can handle it. That's Superman just like, you know, okay, you can have your little playground of Gotham. Because when Superman goes and takes Joker back, he's like, there's no way Joker left Gotham without you knowing. Why didn't you give me a heads up or anything or tell me, you know, Joker's coming? And he's like, it was a test to see how well you would do against Joker. And Superman, like, punches the Batmobile. It's just like, don't you ever test me again. Otherwise, if your playmate comes to Gotham, he may not return home in one piece. And I was like, oh, snap, that's awesome. Because Batman's just like, you know, it was a test for you, like he like he does. And he's like, it, it's a test to see how well you do against an opponent like Joker. And it's like, you do that again, your playmate's not coming home. And I thought that was really cool. Well, see, I see Superman as, like, not even caring what Batman has to say. Like, he's telling him if he hurts another another civilian, he's, he's done. And Batman would be like, oh, this is my city. And Superman. You know how many people Superman would have to kill in Gotham yeah. if it were like that? He would have to kill every single Batman villain. Batman <coughs> almost never saves anyone. Well, Batman saves very few Superman, people. I see Superman is doing that because I see Superman doing the right thing, not the not the, not the popular thing. So Superman like killing everyone he has to and becoming <laughs> president to save people. Stop looping it back. I feel Superman. Stop does it. Right. So, <laughs> so in your world, Superman just goes and kills every single Batman villain. He tells Batman if they hurt another civilian, they're done. So. You know, Batman hardly ever saves anyone. Well, then Batman's not like really Like, in Batman already. Endgame, he saves, like, one little kid, and everyone else is infected. Then he saves, like, the city afterwards, but, like, he saves one kid from getting infected. The entire rest of the population of Gotham is infected. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good Batman is at saving people. <laughs> See, I feel like Superman would stop that. That's how, that's how I view it. I, won't, I don't view Superman as, as being like, well, this is your territory. I'm going to leave you to I don't. That's why you have to do it because the way comics is. Otherwise, Superman would appear in every single book. Yeah, I, I understand that, but that's just how I see Superman's character. So, in this, because Batman's got his little town. Everyone's got their little town. And Batman's just like, just don't go to Gotham. That's the, that's the moral of the story. Don't go to Gotham if you want to stay alive or don't want to be mutilated. If you go to Gotham, chances are you're going to die or become a, a villain or a hero. Or become mutilated. And mutilation sometimes makes you become a villain or a hero. Like in uh, Grant Morrison's Batman and Robin run, when that chick got uh, mutilated by Dollmaker, not Dollmaker, uh, by Professor Pig. And so she became a villain after that. She became Red Hood's sidekick. That's a perfect example. Don't go to Gotham unless you want to end up looking like a doll. Or something of that sort. You don't have a whole lot to say about these issues. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, what am I supposed to say? They, it basically just shows the two characters. I mean, it shows that Joker just does it to get a reaction out of the hero, and Superman is, like, the perfect hero. Although, I think he would kill Joker. <laughs> <coughs> I don't think he, like, because Joker didn't do, didn't uh, hurt anyone. And the thing is, like, that is also stepping outside the boundaries of law, just murdering him right there. If he were to kill someone, then yes. Superman taking the law into his own hand is stepping outside the law. What? Mm. Yes, when he when he goes and stops people, that's stepping outside the law. 
Yeah. So, right, so I mean, literally putting on the cape and jumping on top of buildings is illegal. Is, you're talking about Batman there. So, man, flying a... around is illegal. Well, no one's ever done it before. How do you know flying is illegal? He didn't get clearance by the, uh, what's it, FAA? Is that, is that the, the governing body for flight? I don't know. Way that, well, he actually, he's talked to the president and everything, so they're A-OK with Superman. Oh my they're God. just not A-OK with him giving the death penalty to whoever he wants. I'm pretty sure no one would be crying if Joker died. Batman would be. Yeah, besides Batman. Batman. Be sitting there just like bawling his eyes out. <laughs> it's like when Nightwing killed Joker and then Batman gave Joker CPR. How stupid can you be? <laughs> why would you do that? I really want to know why Batman decided to give Joker <coughs> CPR. He loves him. Why? I don't know. Nightwing accidentally, because he beat the living crap out of Joker, like literally, because he killed him with his fist, and then Batman was like, "Oh no, Joker's dead!" And started giving him CPR. I don't know how, I don't know how a fit from dying from being beat to death could CPR help you out, but oh, maybe it stopped his heart from being beaten to death somehow. I don't know. And then he gives him CPR. It's like, why would you do that, Batman? Finally. The jo- Joker's done with. I could understand with the. Whole, the only thing I can understand with that would be the fact that uh, Nightwing. You could think would be. Oh no, you know he's all messed up because he killed someone. The problem is Nightwing's a superhero, so he'd get over it like in a couple months or something. Number two, he's seen way more gruesome things than just him beating someone to death. He's seen things that like don't even compare that. Shit. Even though it was him <coughs> taking a life, it doesn't matter. It's him killing someone that is like completely evil. And he's seen way worse things. So I have a hard time believing that that would affect uh, Nightwing that much. And Batman's just like, no, guys, save him. See, the thing that's all irritated at is Red Hood should have killed Joker by now. Like Red Hood's incompetent. Jason Todd kind of sucks. I like him as a character, but as far as getting things done, he sucks. That's stupid. That's the way Red Hood is. Like, he's a really cool character, but he never does anything. Well, he never successfully does anything. Like, ever. He's tried many a time, but... Okay, so how about this Red Hood storyline? Okay. Okay, this is Ian's fan fiction of the week. Oh gosh. Red Hood comes back to Gotham. Captures Dick Grayson. And then Superman kills him and No, nope, no, nope. captures president. Dick Grayson and captures Joker. And How would he do that? Because Dick Grayson's way better than he's, he tricks him. How? Dick Grayson's not an idiot and Jason Dodd isn't that smart. <laughs> he's trying to be. And Deathstroke's not that Deathstroke's not stupid enough to lose to everyone he's lost to, but he has. Who? Name who he's lost to. Wonder Woman. Oh, uh, when? This in his comic book run. New Batman. Year? Batman. He didn't lose to Batman. A draw. Nick. He's smart enough to have a draw with Batman. Well, to be fair, he was weakened during that fight. Huh? He was weakened during that fight. Oh my goodness. He was. Whatever. That's what he talked about in the book, how he's weakened, and it was a draw. Alright, this is what would happen. See, that's why you can't talk about stuff when you don't know anything about the character. He would. That's kind of hard, huh? He would trick Dick Grayson. And so he have Joker and Dick Grayson captured. Actually, no, he wouldn't even need to capture Joker. He'd tell Joker what's going to happen, and Joker would agree to it. Why would Joker agree to it? Because Batman has to pick. it either kill Dick Grayson or kill Joker. If, Why would he kill Dick Grayson? Because then Joker's going to die? Uh, if he doesn't kill Dick Grayson, Joker's going to die. Oh, okay. So he sets Batman up, and he comes there, and he has a gunpoint on each of them, and he tells them to pick one of them. But then Batman has an anti nope. gadget and fixes it. That's what the comic book writers would do. Nope, he has no gadget to fix it. So he tackles them into a pit? No, Batman is like, it's like in like, um. Ace Chemical is where it all started. No, he's in a. No, no, Jimmy, no. He's in a bulletproof, fortify all glass room. With two guns trained on both of them. Mm-hmm. And Batman has to decide. Okay. What's and Batman it? can't decide, so he kills Dick Grayson. What? Yep, he, Batman's like, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to pick. King. And then he takes Dick Grayson's body to non Bat, puts it in the pit, but is killed by Laurel Lance because <laughs> he put her in when he she was getting ready to put Sarah in. And so Dick Grayson doesn't get to come back to life because he never gets so to be put in the pit. So place in the Arrow universe? No, it's just Laurel goes crazy in the comics. Sarah's stuff. not in the comics. <clears throat> My bad. <laughs> no, Dick Grayson dies and that's how Dick Grayson is killed. You know, you're a predictable writer. Everyone knows someone's going to die. Yeah, but you didn't know if it was going to be Dick Grayson or the Joker. And then then Batman gets killed. (laughs) Well, everyone knows Batman's going to die if he appears in your book. Who kills Batman? How? Red Hood kills him. 
Beats him to death. Beats him to death. Yes. How original. Oh, the crowbar? Uh. So yeah, he feels how he did? No. He takes his utility belt and just pulls out everything on it and just beats him with it. Well, so he just throws everything in his utility belt at him. No, he just takes, like, he'll, like, pull out, like, brass. Oh, like belt. a belt and just beats him? No, like, you know, Batman has, like, everything in his utility belt? Yeah, you said he pulls out everything. Like, so I he, he just goes through everything and just pulls out and just, just beats him. Because okay. he wouldn't kill Joker. Okay, that's kind of stupid. And then after he kills Batman, he kills Joker. Okay, how does he kill Joker? He just shoots him in the head. I just want to see someone be beat to death with a crowbar. Okay, then Batman beat to death with a crowbar. <laughs> While Joker lost, uh, watches and Joker cries. No, Joker tries to stop it. Well, yeah. Joker be crying, too. And then he just gets shot in the head because Jason Todd's like, you're not even worth the, the, the joy to be So is Jason Todd your favorite member of the Bat family? <laughs> no, he's not. Dick Grayson is, but Dick Grayson's the only one that you could use to say that. And then Damien. He's Damien. He's his own son. He don't care about Damien. You know he don't care about Damien. Yeah, he does. Not really. Yeah, he does because Batman's like a jerk. You could say maybe he cares more about Damien than Dick. It's hard to say. It all depends on the writer. Yeah, Batman's but... a jerk a lot of times. <coughs> yeah, this has been more of the bashing on Batman podcast. We haven't bashed on Marvel at all. Uh, I, heard, I heard Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. sucks still. Well, according to Danny's Twitter feed, Agents of, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, season 3 is terrible. Uh, so... Coming from the same guy that likes Laurel Lance, though, so you take that with a grain of salt <laughs> and throw it away. <laughs> throw away the grain of salt? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I do gotta call out some people that I actually do like... Well, you're, you don't like Danny. I don't mind Danny. It's just he needs to get his act together. Alex <laughs> Dotton, he always tweets at me after it, so you're cool, bro. Um, 52 is new. He loved my fan fiction. You go, man. And then Slazzy, he he made my Superman hold up, hold up. You guys, you guys are awesome. Danny, you're all right. <laughs> but you got to get off this Laurel kick, bro. Uh, I, I, <laughs> and the Red Hood story would be, would be called Red Hood Bloodlines. Bloodlines? Yes. Why? None of them are related. Because they're all part of the Bat family. To Joker's not. He's basically like the the most prominent member of the Bat family. No. Yes, he is. Why I mean, not? Yeah. Just say that. Batman comes there, he sees him there, and before he, J- J- Dick Grayson, or Dredd says, just choose, and Batman's like, I won't choose, and he just shoots Dick Grayson. <laughs> and Batman's just like, oh god, oh, this never happened before, <laughs> oh no! And the Batman's stunned, and then that's when Red Hood goes over and just starts beating on him, and Batman's not, and Batman's not even prepared, because he's so, like he said, he's so shocked, and that's when Joker's trying to get out of his harness, and he's beating Batman to death. And Joker gets ready to get out of his harness. Red Hood goes over and tells him, "You're not, you're not even worth uh, this bullet." But shoots him anyway, right in the head. And the Batman's like, "No!" And then he just goes over and beats Batman's his head. Batman's still alive. Yeah, he's he's on the verge of death, and he goes beats him to death. Oh. Then Alfred comes and goes, "Would you like some tea, Master Todd?" Uh, so so uh, Alfred's like, "Should have done this years ago." Yep. <laughs> Alfred was master by the whole thing. Uh, Didn't know he's sorry. He had to kill Master Dick. You just want to say Master Dick. Master Grayson. <laughs> Uh, and then they, then they, then Alfred goes and shotguns Damien in the head because he can't stand him. I could see that happening. He always calls him Pennyworth. Just says Pennyworth. Damien's a little brat. He is. Most That's why Alfred time. goes and kills him. <laughs> Alfred's like, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. See that uh, Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill have not been offered roles reportedly. They, I mean, they've not re- been offered roles for. Uh, Killing Joke anime movie, according to Kevin Conroy. Even though earlier, like months or whatever before, we had gotten the reports that Mark Hamill was reportedly. They're gonna go with Troy got. Baker and whatever other person. I don't name. think so, because it's done by Bruce Tim. He's from the animated series, so I think he's gonna get Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill. And it makes no sense not to. Do you guys wanna. You got, would you guys read Red Hood Bloodlines? I would read it. The writer of Superman Hold Up Hold Up. It would only be like two, and three All those issues. other storylines where Batman got killed comes. Ian Miller. <laughs> Could you imagine that? Just like Batman just walks in and he's like choose and he's like red. He's like Jason. Yeah. You don't know. And he just shoots him. You don't just have these fantasies of like Batman dying. No, because it shows you how inept and pathetic Batman really is as a character. <laughs> like everyone, like he he's given more leeway and 
coincidences than any other character in history. And I love Batman. Actually, my Twitter, I realize it says I'm Batman as my Twitter bio. <laughs> um, but he is. And it's just annoying after a while. It's just like... Especially with all his fans. It's like, you realize how pathetic Batman actually is if you strip... If you actually really look at his character and how many coincidences he has. Like they said, he has a gadget for, for damn near everything. Pretty much. Okay, you Batman. But, uh, yeah, I think we're gonna bring this podcast to a close. Thank you guys for listening. And as always, we will see you guys on the next one. Go Master Chief. No, go Lock.